Welcome to the Brian Wright Audio Experience, a podcast dedicated to helping entrepreneurs grow their business, make more money, and successfully navigate through the chaos of life, all while working, spending, and stressing less. And now your host, he's a husband, a father of two, an international business and life coach, and a trusted motivational speaker for some of the most respected companies in the world, such as Invisalign and many others. Brian Wright. Hey, Brian Wright Show Nation. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Wright here, and welcome in to another edition of the Brian Wright Show. We're coming off a really good one. If you, if you, Just a, a quick reminder for everybody, you can communicate with us here at the Brian Wright Show. There's a text message feature in the description below that we've implemented. And since we've implemented that, we've had good feedback. We've had good audience interaction, texting us, asking questions. I do my best to get on there and respond personally uh, the best I can. But if you have any questions, uh, you want to set up a, a business consultation with me to learn how I can come in to help your business, just click that link, shoot us a text message, and and we'll get back. About, my team's going to get back with you. It may even be me that gets back with you. I, I love being a part of the listeners out there, love being part of the prospective customers, and obviously I love being part of our private client customers out there. We also have an experience training hospitality event that will absolutely transform your business that we are prepping. And we're going to start announcing dates for that here at our training facility in Colorado Springs here in the lodge and flying horse. That one's going to be great because you could fly yourself, you and your team members in, and you're going to be amongst a lot of entrepreneurs and really looking forward to putting that event together and just continue the journey. You know, we're going to be dive. That will be the ultimate ultimate sales, hospitality, verbiage, presentation, uh, psychology, marketing event. You will come back completely transformed. So looking forward to announcing those dates. We're coming off one talking about the halo effect and what it is. And we talked about specifically how you can apply that over to the front end of your business. Gave other examples because the halo effect, it, it can affect everything inside your business. But the more you use it towards the front end of that consumer journey, uh, the more powerful it can become because people are shopping, right? You're not the only business they are likely to call. And you're probably not the only business they're likely to receive a consult from. So the more you can power pack that on the front end and user receptionist in a way, the more customers you will get, the more sales you will make, the more you will increase your revenue and you will already be on that journey to creating super fans that reduce your advertising costs because your your customers become your sales force, which is what all of you as business owners out there should be striving for. So we talked about that and and we got a lot of good messages, good text message communication, good questions from from the audience members out there. Uh, proud of you for some of the questions. Some of the questions were very, very smart. And that's what I want all of you to do. Interact with us on here and we're going to interact back. Today, we're going to be diving in. I mentioned this on that podcast, what the next one was going to be. Today, we're going to be diving into the power of persuasion versus persuasion. Many of you out there are probably familiar with Robert Cialdini's book, The Power of Persuasion. If you're not, it is a, it is a fantastic book to go read and use your imagination on how you can, how you can transform experiences inside your business to make sure you're interacting with your customer or prospective customer in a way that's going to drive benefit to you, right? Get you more what you're wanting by delivering more than expected to, to people. And it's a fantastic book. He has another one that I believe is more powerful that's not a New York Times bestseller, uh, like The Power of Persuasion. His other book is The Power of Persuasion. And every time we talk a lot, I, I talk about it as a speaker on stage, I talk about it on my other podcast, the New Patient Group podcast, which is a reminder, even though I'm talking to doctor business owners on that podcast, all of you out there, anybody that wants to attract more, more customers, uh, attract, uh, you know, uh, an increase in your sales conversion, you know, just simply grow your business, be more efficient, less chaotic at the same time. Uh, it's a great podcast for all of you out there to to listen to. We're over as I do this podcast today. We're in the midst of season seven out there. I think we have 100 and, 115, 120 episodes over there. So lot, lots to listen to. And every time that we're going to do an event around the power of persuasion, you know, and we're marketing it on social media and just announcing it and trying to attract listeners and, and audience members, we get people... Every time this is, and I mentioned in the last podcast, kind of a funny story about persuasion. That's what this is. And this will show you how powerful you can, just how powerful it is for businesses. And if you use it, how, how actually more powerful it'll be for you because so many people don't even know what it is. 
And the messages we get would be like, you know, hey, Brian, you know, we follow you. We just want to let you know, you know, your company, uh, New Patient Group, is an example. You misspelled persuasion. You accidentally reversed the R and E, and, and it says persuasion, not persuasion. And we get several messages like that, and we chuckle internally uh, because we, we have to respond back and say, no, hey, look, thanks for looking out for us, but we actually meant persuasion, right? We didn't mean persuasion. It's just a lesser known topic. And, and persuasion, you know, d- dives more, well, we're going to talk about it today, but I, there's a reason persuasion, I think, is, is more popular sometimes. And there's a reason why persuasion sometimes gets overlooked. But here's the reality, what you're going to learn today, persuasion is, ab- is actually more powerful than persuasion as it relates to converting people on your schedule, uh, getting that consultation booked, whether you're a business that goes to somebody's house or they come into your office or you do it virtually, whatever it may be. Uh, it's more powerful in in increasing the chances of them showing up to your place of business already ready to make a purchase. Or by the time you even get to their house, if that's the way you do it or online, like I said, they're, they're more likely to make a purchase. Uh, it is a way to lower your advertising dollars. Uh, there's all kinds of magnificent things uh, that persuasion you can use persuasion with. Now, one of the ways is the halo effect. Now, that's also halo effect would be in the power of persuasion realm. That is not what you know. The the book, while Robert Cialdini's book is great, the pre and persuasion, we take it way way more in depth. So they use it's I can't remember how many, but call it five or six psychological terminologies. You know, we are using 50, 100, 150 psychological terminologies uh, that one, what we're going to be teaching on this podcast. I also teach over on the new patient group podcast. Uh, but just when we coach customers, when we do digital marketing for customers, when you hire us to come in and do customer experience training, uh, employee experience training, we train the leadership team. Uh, and it, it's all just it all makes such a huge huge difference. And today I'm going to, I'm going to divide what each one is. And then we're going to give some examples. And I want you all, regardless of the business you are to, to be using your imagination on how you can apply these examples, these terminologies immediately into your business. All right, let's start with, with persuasion. Persuasion and and there's more in depth than you can go look this up. And if you see me speak, I have slides up that actually that actually showcase the psychological definition of what it actually means. But what I always like to do, you know, one of the things I, I like to teach doctors from a sales standpoint in their exam room is, you know, talk on a level that people are aren't gonna think that you're a snobby, you know, elitist, you know, ass. Talk in a way that that you're you're your potential customer, your potential patient is fully going to understand and see value in. And that is how you create the authoritative effect. It's not talking in ways that nobody's going to understand what the hell you're saying. And I got a long, a long time ago. So, so shout out, this is to doctors, Bob Skopak and Jeff Pascal. And, and they've been longtime customers and friends of mine. And, and one time, and one of the things that we do is we'll have doctors fly in to other doctors' practices and we hang out and we go back to the doctor's house. We cook, we hang out. Well, <laughs> a long time ago, we're in Bob Skopak's basement and this is in North Barrington, uh, north side suburb of uh, Chicago. And we're, we're down there, we're, we're having cocktails or whatever. And, and Jeff Pascal, uh, if you know him, uh, he's one of my, he's one of my, actually both of them, Bob and Jeff are, are two of my all time favorites working over on the new patient group side. And, you know, we're down there having cocktails and, and Jeff is one of the, is one of the smartest humans, uh, you'll, you'll ever meet. And, and it's not like, like, obviously Bob is too. And, and I'm not going to sit here and say, I am, that would sound a little, <laughs> sound a little snobbish, but I would at least like to think that I am. And, and we're sitting down there and every once in a while, Jep can get into these conversations that are using it. If you've ever saw the friends episode where, where Joey was going to speak and, and say a speech at Monica and Chandler's wedding, you know, in order to be smart, he went in and he used the, he used the, Sothor, the, 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 the thesaurus for every single word. And he changed even the most simple words into these complex things. And it just made no sense whatsoever. Well, Jeff is sitting there talking to Bob and I down in the basement, and he goes into this deal where, I mean, the words are so high level, every word, 
And eventually Bob and I look at each other. We have to stop Jeff. We're like, dude, we have no idea. We have no idea what in the hell you're talking about. You got to break it down into our terminology. Uh, and and that's what all of you, I, I'm just using doctors, all of you as business get to remember the consumer does not value your product or service the way you do. And and it can be hard because whatever we do, like like with me, I have passions. And, and whatever you do out there, you have passions. But the problem is a lot of times when you sell those passions to other people, they don't see the same value. So you've got to speak differently. You've got to find a way uh, that's actually going to speak their language, not yours. And, and that is why you know, wh- whenever you go back to what I was talking about previously – about the definition of persuasion, instead of going into the in-depth paragraphs and the high-level terminologies, I like to just break it down nice and simple, where my brain can can in- instantly wrap around it, and and all of yours can instantly wrap around it, and you can leave today thinking about these areas of your business uh, differently. And employees watching too, this again, this is how you add more value to the business you work for. This is how you advance your career by learning these phrases, these terminologies. And using your imagination on what you can get better at, at doing. And starting, like I said, with persuasion, the simple, quickest way I can say what it is, is persuasion is how you get people empathetic and loyal to your brand prior to truly experiencing it. What a lot of you have to remember out there is your true brand is inside your doors. It, it's not your marketing, your advertising, your billboards, things like that. Is that an extension of it? Absolutely. Does that help you broadcast what your brand is inside your doors? Absolutely. But your brand, for the most part, is created every with every interaction you have with your consumer, your customer, or your prospective customers. That is your brand. And brand, I'm going to have tons of podcasts on this show about brand because it is such a misunderstood terminology. I see all the time people like, hey, I need to increase my brand awareness. What advertising do I do? I need to, you know, we, we want more people to know who our brand is. You know, what kind of billboard can I buy? And again, does that help you showcase it? Of course it does. But your brand is built, maintained, and moved forward with everything that goes on inside your doors. And that is a major mindset shift because what I'm about to tell you about persuasion, I tell you right now, it will have a major, major impact on your business, on your sales, on your revenue, on again, on, 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 on starting the journey on creating super fans, not just customers, which again, it goes back to for all of you, your goal should be creating fans. Your goal cannot just be getting customers or obviously regretful buyers, and your, for your brand to create super fans, it goes way beyond your product, right? Your product could be amazing. It could be amazing. But all the other interactions, like when I call your business, do I sit on hold or do you answer right away? When I walk into your business, do you greet me right away with a nice professional manner that's unexpected? Those are two quick examples of hundreds, right? That will determine whether or not they're going to be a fan, not how good your product is. Now, how good your product is, is a part of that, right? That's one major ingredient to the overall recipe of creating super fans. Back to persuasion. You know, if you're trying to get people sympathetic, empathetic to your brand prior to truly experiencing it, really what you need to do is you need to divide this into to two different categories. The persuasion is everything to do leading up to you meeting that prospective customer. Let me give you an example. And I'll give you an example over in the, over in the orthodontic space uh, where my company, New Patient Group, is. Because, you know, for, for consumers, entrepreneurs, et cetera, that listen to this, this particular podcast, you'll be able to understand this really well. So let's say you type in Invisalign into Google. You see an Invisalign commercial on TV. Uh, you type it into Google, right? You have all these different options that pull up, right? Okay, so that's starting the persuasion. Now, internally in your business, what starts the persuasion is your culture, your leadership abilities, your mindset, your innovation, you know, how you look at things differently compared to everybody else. This all goes into persuasion. Now, the way your digital marketing then showcases to people, that's part of persuasion. It's an extension of what I just said, your mindset, your culture, your leadership abilities. Are you innovative or, you know, do you, do you not pay attention to the digital marketing experience people are getting online? And, and I love putting spins on this because for a lot of you out there, when you think of digital marketing, you're like, how can I attract more customers, right? Which is a good thing, right? But nothing wrong with that. But where your mind has to be rather than that is how can I offer 
a unique experience that gets me as a business what I want by delivering people at this moment in time as they shop around for what they entered into Google, entered into YouTube, entered in on the video search on TikTok. How do I look at that and how do I offer those people more than expected, right? How do I stand out? So at this point, again, it's about how do you showcase yourself uniquely in a very different way. So part of persuasion is when I hit, you know, I click on whatever comes up on Google, part of persuasion is your SEO results. Like you've got to have good ones for me to even find you. But when I click on that website, what does it look like? Professional photography, bios of your team members, all kinds of videos from the business owner, restaurants out there is the chef on there doing a virtual tour through the kitchen, talking about ways how you source the food. Like this is the digital marketing that we do for people. And, and it's, and it's powerful because as you shop around, you know, as I go to your YouTube station, is your chef all over it? Is your doctor all over it? Is uh, the, the owner of, uh, you know, is your lead law, you know, is your owner of the law firm all over it? Realtors, are you all over it? Are you educating people? Are you talking about your, your per, you know, showcasing and getting people to know, like, and trust you, which are the three most important words in sales, plenty of podcasts to follow. Like, how does the ex overall experience as I search around from channel to channel, how does it kick the ass of all the other people that I could potentially click their links? And when I do, how are you showcased? How is your food plated better than all the other options when I search around? Right? That is part of persuasion. If you view those things as a cost, you're going to be just like everybody else. If you say, look, no, that's an investment. Like that is how I win the battle when I'm a commodity is through experience, 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 experience. That's the culture. That's what you embed in your employees' minds. That's what you're constantly talking about. It's the infinite game of being better for the customer, better for the customer, not easy. And this is why this stuff is so unique, because you will kick everybody else's ass if you can wrap your head around this. It works for any business, especially if you're a commodity, if you just commit to it. Overnight, sometimes, yeah, like a couple podcasts I go ago, if, I, if you just plug the leaky hole of the missed incoming calls you have, yeah, that will start helping you overnight. Right? And then there's other things like culture and even what we're talking about today. Th this is a very in-depth, like I'm not going to go on uh, because th this power of pre versus persuasion uh, presentation, this is three hours on stage. This is a three-day workshop with me coming into your business or you flying here to our training facility. This stuff is extremely in-depth. It's a higher level of learning. So as you can imagine, you know, you, you're, you're hitting Invisalign, like I said, in the Google, you have all these options, you coming around a practice whose website, you know, has beautiful video gifts and the website speeds good and the language speaks to you differently than the other pages. And there's educational stuff. There's also fun stuff. There's engaging things. You want to learn about the team. They have bios on there. They have all kinds of really cool things on their website. And then maybe you did a search Invisalign on YouTube instead of Google, or maybe both. And there's all kinds of YouTube videos showcasing the doctor and he's talking to you or she's talking to you about all kinds of things to make sure you pay attention to on where you buy Invisalign, right? Because everybody out there, remember, you know, I'm a, I'm a consultant and speaker for Align Technology, the makers of Invisalign. And one of the things I pound in our practices' minds, our businesses' minds is, look, the purchase, you're investing in the doctor. You're investing in the team. It's not the tool. Invisalign is an amazing tool, amazing tool. But it's an amazing tool when it's the right doctor performing it. Otherwise, it can't be an amazing tool. And so that's where the investment is. So a lot, of, a lot of showcase videos like that. So the point being here is that you are now as a business, a practice in this example. If you can imagine everybody out there, if you're shopping around, how this business is now a step above right? You are viewing them in a different way compared to everybody else, right? Which in the previous podcast, the halo effect, I'm not going to go into it, but that would go into the psychological power of the halo effect. Make sure to check out that prior podcast. So then you say, Hey, look, I'm going to call this business, right? This one seems to stand out, or maybe they have a nice online scheduler that makes me convenient. I get to pick my day, my time, Right? Maybe they have a nice live chat on the website that's actually live chat, and I can ask some questions. Somebody responds back right away. Like This place is really standing out in the game of commoditization. I have all these choices. 
right? So I'm going to go by the one that provides the most unique experiences, convenience. They showcase their technology. I go on and on and on and on. All right, so at this given moment in time, this business is winning, right? Doesn't mean you're not going to call other ones, right? But what it does guarantee is, is that you're not going to lose at this point in the consumer journey. And this is how all of you always have to go back to is what can I be doing to offer uniqueness to the customer that other people that they could be shopping for or just any other people business on the planet aren't. This is the mindset all of you must have. If you want to win at the lowest advertising dollar and taking your customers into your ultimate super fans that refer, talk about you in the community, interact on your social media channels, like your YouTube videos, et cetera, et cetera. So now you call, and this goes into, into last podcast, you know, all of you out there, not all, but the majority of you out there, you know, if I mystery called and we do this, we mystery call organizations. And I can tell you that if we called a thousand right now, and we called a plumber, an orthodontist, a dentist, a lawyer, a real estate agent, and a restaurant, maybe I said one of those twice, I don't know, but if that's it, and we did a thousand calls with a mix of each. Every receptionist is going to be about the same. There's going to be some that seem happier and nicer than others, but the verbiage, the overall feel that they provide, almost all are going to do it the exact same way, except for about maybe two to five out of the 1,000. Now, the two to five out of the 1,000 really stand out. And this is the point because you're, you're one up in the journey with digital marketing at this moment in time. Now I call because of that. And your receptionist needs to be able to continue this story of, hey, look, this place is unique. Again, back to the halo effect, but also so many other psychological terminologies. Because again, the goal is along this consumer sales funnel, this consumer journey, the goal is to be unique in every interaction they have with you. Now, this doesn't stop after they buy, right? You have to be, again, thinking, how can I up that game even more once they buy? Like, don't be the business that understaffs the customer service 800 number and overstaffs the sales one. You suck as a business if that's how you're thinking. At minimum, you should equally staff them. And I will argue the infinite minded ones that realize not on paper, but over time, you will make more by having more customer service agents to where those phone calls are, are answered and two rings are under and your customer never has to wait on hold. Right Again, that has nothing to do with your product or service, but everything to do with whether or not they're going to remain loyal, be a repeat buyer, and become your super fan, but like I'm saying, we're trying to accomplish. So again, the phones. If your receptionist is trained and you use your receptionist and view them as a sales and marketing message, they are not a data collector. They have to be trained as much, if not more than anybody in your organization on sales, hospitality, verbiage, presentation, psychology, once again, meaning know why to say it, how to say it, when to say it, what to say, okay? They, if you commit to training your receptionist to be in that, right, you will now be up two steps of the consumer journey as opposed just to the digital marketing. Because this is what happens. If your digital marketing is amazing and then you call and your receptionist is just blah, you've destroyed the immersive experience, if your digital marketing is not so good, but they call you anyway, just because they're shopping around and your receptionist knocks it out of the park, better at those skill sets that I just said, uses beautiful edification language, understands how to make that person feel special, how to shed your light in a complete uniqueness that others won't, like that receptionist now will overtake the digital marketing. So even though the digital marketing is not that good, the receptionist makes up for it. Meanwhile, the other digital marketing is good, but the receptionist isn't that great. And this is how it flops. People remember the most recent thing and they tend to remember what sucks, right? So you have to be even better at these things, right? You could offer a great journey the whole way and at the end, screw it up. And that's what they're going to remember, right? So now if you do this, this is still part of pre-suasion. So now you've got people that are going to schedule at a higher level. They're going to view your business in a way that they want to get, they're excited and they want to learn more. That reduces your ad cost because your conversion goes up. It reduces the chances they're going to no-show the appointment with all of you deal with in some form or fashion. Some of you deal with it a ton, right? And instead of saying, look, let's fix that, 
You're out advertising to get more calls. It's just asinine. No, fix the freaking no-shows by training, by having an unbelievable digital marketing presence, training the receptionist how to speak in a way that gets people to show up. And then when that phone calls over, all of you have, almost all of you out there have what we call downtime or pre-arrival strategies. Now, this would be different for, you know, plumbers, you go to somebody's house, right? Where lawyers out there, you probably have them come to your place of business. You may do a virtual consult. But the point is, is after that appointment is made, right? And going back to the orthodontist example, right? And you typed in Invisalign. If you had all kinds of Invisalign questions and this receptionist was just knocking it out of the park, using that beautiful edification language, edifying and showcasing why the doctor matters and why she works for the best. And they're shedding all these different lights. Like you are starting to view this, this business in a very different way. But now the phone calls over. Okay. What happens? So many of you out there, what happens? Automated text message reminder, blah, put me to sleep. Automated email reminder, blah, put me to sleep. Like this is what you do as a business. You may like call and say, hey, this is uh, Nancy from so-and-so's practice. I'm the TC, you know, you know, doing a, a, a phone call reminder. Um, that's what all of you out there do in every industry. But I'm going to paint a a different picture about what would happen if you're a customer of ours. And I'll give, not going to give the whole thing away. We'll give one is that, and this goes back again to persuasion is imagine, you know, the practice that you scheduled at with, with Invisalign. Well, you're probably going to schedule it two or three. That's just typically what consumers do. And you hang up and you know, you get a, you get an email and now you got to fill out paperwork and you get a text message reminder, blah, 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 blah. What if you hung up and all of a sudden text to you on your phone was a welcome video from the doctor that said, hey, this is, this is Dr. Joe and, uh, and or whatever. I'll use one of, hey, this is Dr. David Boshkin. So his, his practice is in Palo Alto in California and he's faculty with me on, uh, on Invisalign. We've spoken together for years, good friend of mine, and he's a customer. Uh, you know, hey, this is Dr. David Boshkin here. I want to be the first to welcome you into our orthodontic family. You know, it means so much. You're going to come in and spend time with us. Let me show you around the office. And he takes you on a little virtual tour. And, you know, maybe the, the team members poke out and say, hi, I'm Nancy. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Nicole. You know, something really cool. And you could make it really professionally done, or you could just make it goofy with a selfie style and just get it done and going. See, the point is, because we live in a video society, is that that would go on your digital marketing channel, which drives traffic to your channel. And and while you're driving traffic to your channel, you actually get to boost your search rankings on YouTube and Google because of it. But you're actually using digital marketing, which today's not about, just a quick pointer. And this is a big way on how we use it for customers, is this is how you would you would create... Again, the persuasion, people being excited, empathetic to the brand, loyal to the brand before they even showed up. Now, there's tons of more examples, and I'm not going to in-depth on any. That's not the point today. The point today is now that as it, when you interact with, with practices, uh, when you search for Invisalign, that's how the persuasion is set up, right? You are blowing them away so much that they become loyal to you before they even walk through the door. And because you're doing that, it increases the chances they are going to walk through the door. And if you're a business out there, look, you've got to count how many no-shows you have times what your average case fee is. And that shows you your revenue loss that if you just fixed it by 10, 30, 50%, how much more money you would have in any given calendar year by plugging it. But what do you all do out there a lot? Not our, not our loyal following. But if you're coming across this, this is the mindset shift that you have to make. Stop your pay-per-click and advertising expenses, plug the leaky holes and invest inside your doors on culture, training your team differently and setting up your digital marketing in a way that other people won't as well. So now that's the persuasion, some quick examples, but now per, okay. Persuasion, you know, starts the moment they enter your parking lot. Now, if, if you're a business and, and we'll just, if you're not, you can still, you can use your imagination on all these things. Right, but now using again the practice example for all of you out there, because I want you to I want you this to be delivered to you as if you were, you know, shopping for Invisalign. So now persuasion, you, you enter in the parking lot, you know, and if the parking lot's clean, uh, the building looks modern and, and nice and up to date, right? You you are continuing the story. 
But you are now entering persuasion. All right, persuasion happens, and I want you to view it as the moment they walk into your parking lot. Right? Now, when they walk through your door, this continues as well, like how you greet them. How much have you trained that person to greet them in a very specific way with psychological verbiage that actually moves it towards a sale? Your digital workflow, whatever it might be inside your business. Lawyers out there, do you do a tour around the office? If you do one, you better darn well know how to sell the value. Otherwise, you're wasting everybody's time. But I want you to look at everything inside your doors. And again, goes back to your culture, how your leadership team is trained, how your team is trained on sales, hospitality, verbiage, presentation, all the things, psychology, all the things you hear me say over and over and over and over here. This is persuasion. How your follow up is, right? If you get if you get the old, you know, car dealerships out there or you know, again, practices using the practice example. I need to speak with my wife. Uh, I need to think about this. I'm not ready. I've got another practice I'm going to go see. Right? How is your follow up processes to get that person to come back through your door and start with you or sign the contract at home and come back to you? Right. OBS, you know, for, for, for clinical people out there, OBS is you bring your kid into a practice and they're not clinically ready. And the doctor says, come back and see us in eight months, how that experience is all that's persuasion. Now, once they sign the contract, this starts over persuasion would again, be everything that goes in prior to them coming in to pick up their product, pick up their car, pick up their, again, the Invisalign trays. So this is the separation. And I will tell all of you, if you want to transform your business, the quickest way you can do it is focus on the persuasion part. Focus on the persuasion part, how your phones, how the people interact with your potential customer on the phones, your downtime pre-arrival strategies, like I talked about your digital marketing. And again, back to your leadership and culture. Those things are your persuasion. Those are the two things. And if you switch your mindset from dumping money into the persuasion, which you should, not telling you not to, right? That should always be part of your marketing dollar. But the other shift is switching a lot of that investment over to before they even walk through your doors. Digital marketing is a big piece of that. Not pay-per-click, not that stuff, but the experience you're delivering people as they shop around. That is where your mindset always have to be. The experience your receptionist is trained to provide people on the phones. Everything goes back to, are you getting what you want from your customer and are they getting more than expected from you? That is the definition foundation of what customer service actually is. You should all live and breathe and die by that definition. What do I want? I want more, uh, I want our, in, I want our sales to go up. Okay. Let's choreograph the behind the scenes journey to make that happen. It's never about one thing. Oftentimes you have to focus on one thing to actually get it to go in the right direction, but you still have to understand it's about a journey. It's a sales cycle. It's a consumer journey. And that I want you broke, breaking it down into pre and persuasion. All right. I hope everybody liked today. Take this to heart and you know, don't, don't listen to this and just go and, and just do what you do. Use your imagination here on the examples I just said and how you can transform your business by again, focusing on unique customer experiences. It is a game changer. Hope everybody enjoyed today. Appreciate your support. Share this with your friends, colleagues, anybody that is looking to improve their life, career, and entrepreneurs out there, their business. As everything, this podcast is dedicated to the hardworking entrepreneurs out there, their team members, as well as all of their family members. But this is also for anybody that just wants to improve and change their mindset. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Whatever day you're listening to this, we'll be back with another edition of The Brian Wright Show in the near future. Bye, everybody.